Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I am just sorting out my level, my volume level. Yeah, and for those of you who first time visiting my channel, um, I talk about uh, various issues. Um, usually they're to help people. Um, sometimes there are experiences that I've had that I think, oh my goodness, you know, I wonder if it's somebody else knows that. Or, you know, sometimes it's about news, a comment on what's happening in the news. Sometimes it's about, you know, people not understanding legislation. Sometimes it's about immigration problems. It's literally any and anything, providing, um, I feel, it can help somebody understand what's going on. So today I wanted to talk about um, a lady who was born in Preston. In 1985, which was after the British Nationality Act came out in 1981. Why is that significant? Because after 1983, anyone born in the UK was not automatically a citizen. Um, so what happened with this young lady was that um, her 13 year old daughter well, she'd never travelled herself, but her 13-year-old daughter needed to go to Spain on a school trip. So the mother, who's born here, thought, OK, I'm going to apply for her passport. So she applies for the passport and is shocked to find out that the passport office does not recognise her as a British citizen. Now, why is that? She's born here. And, um, yeah, the reason why that is, let me tell you, the reason why that is, is because when her mother went to register the birth, the father was out celebrating the birth with his friends. So he wasn't there. So the mother, who was from Vincent and the Grenadines, registered the child by herself. As a result all these years later, and what to make it worse, um, when the mother travelled, during travelling from one place to the other in the 1980s, she lost the passport. And because she wasn't going anywhere, she didn't bother to seek for a replacement. So um, she didn't even realise that she wasn't, without the passport, it could cause problems. Anyway, fortunately... The, the mother and the father are still together. The father is a white British. The mother, like I said, is from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So what's happened now is that the father has now authenticated all of the information. So now um, the young lady and her child are able to get their citizenship. Citizenship was awarded to the mother under the Windrush Task Force. Apparently the passport office told them to go to the Windrush Task Force. And then we have uh, an organisation, I think it's a non-profit organisation, called Pre Pre Preston Windrush Generation and Descendants UK. They've helped over 10 people, and the group is almost 200 members from Preston UK and the world. And the positive outcome also precipitated a Facebook group called Preston Windrush Generation and Descendants. It's run by Glenda Andrew, um, also known as Lady G, um, Life UK, and Sakina. Um, but I don't have Sakina's last name here, I'm afraid. Sakina is actually the person who went through this ordeal. And, you know, through the persistence, and like I said, if she hadn't had the Windrush Task Force or Preston, it's quite a long name, Preston Windrush Generation and Descendants UK to intervene, she might have been, she could have even been deported. It's as bad as that. So what am I saying here? What is the lessons to be learned out of all of this? Number one, um, the mother during travel lost the passport and didn't get it replaced straight away. So therefore, that was a hiccup. Um, the father, because the father, the British father, ordinarily, British father is in the bag. 
no question, straight British citizenship. But like I said, because he was out celebrating with his friends at the time, he didn't realise that by not being at the registration, it would um, affect his, his daughter's immigration status. And he was actually traumatised by that. But anyway, it's sorted now. So it's important that the father is present when registering, especially if the father is British. Um, one parent has to be British in order for the child to be able to be registered as a British citizen. Like I said, it costs about a thousand pounds to be registered um, as a British citizen. Under the Windrush Task Force, I think you get it all done free if you're eligible. But for those who don't come under the Windrush Task Force, it is about a thousand pounds. But it's so important. You want don't want down the line what happened to Sakina and her her daughter um, to happen to you just because the child is not registered properly in the country. And then technically the worst case scenario is that that person could be stateless, um, won't have no access to um, public resources, no NHS, can't get a job, can't get no student loans. That's the worst case scenario if the child is not registered. So it's so important to have your child, as long as it's born in the country, have your child registered. It's so important. People have children all the time. They have the birth certificate and they think, oh, the child is a citizen. No, you have to take that child to be registered. And if neither of the parents are you for a British citizen, they can't even register that child as a, as a citizen, even though it's born in the country. So that is an issue. Um, it's also easier if the couple are married, um, because if the couple is married and one of them is British citizen, um, that child is automatically, you don't even have to register and pay that thousand pounds. So if the couple is married, you don't have to worry about that. So bring back the marriage, you know, for those who are having children. And I think that's all really. Um, I don't think I have forgotten anything. Yeah, so let's leave it there. Bye-bye.